This is part two of the new Range Rover story. This is the Range Sport. A little bit like the changes to the Rig Brother, the Range Rover, the changes are subtle but highly significant on the outside. They've smoothed the front off a lot more. It's got fantastic new headlights with LED signatures that really do shine like jewelry on the front of the car and a new, tighter, deeper grille. Land Rover's very clever chief designer, Jerry McGovern, has also worked a little miracle on the rest of the car. Although it's exactly the same size, he somehow managed to disguise the size. It looks more compact, you know, a little bit smaller in dimension, but it isn't. Another area of the big change which we'll look at shortly is the interior, which is really quite a phenomenal improvement. But the big thing they've been working on is to actually give the range sport a lot more sport. We're about to show you just how much they've improved that. We're going around the wet handling track at Myra at speeds that I wouldn't contemplate going around here in, in a submarine or a sports car. This is quite an incredible feeling, this. We are sideways on at about 70 miles an hour around the track you can hear it screeching there we're now going down a full straight this is meant to simulate driving on ice and rain we're doing just over 90 now coming into a tight right hand bend <laughs> this is like motoring ballet you cannot believe that a vehicle that is over two and a half ton is performing and handling like this this vehicle categorically now lives up to the Air Sport in its title. Having been given a masterclass on just how well this sport performs on a racing circuit and in treacherous wet conditions by uh, Mike Cross, I'm now going to put it to the more sort of mundane but uh, far more practical test of what it's like on the road. Range Rover are stressing just how much more refined they've made the car, that it's not simply a case of lots of power, but a very harsh, firm ride, which is normally the case. They're saying they've also dialed in, when you're on a smooth road, a perfect ride. And I have to say that this is a beautifully relaxed cruiser. You always know you have the power, just dab the accelerator, and you are really moving very, very quickly. This is one seriously impressive engine. Land Rover also say they've put a huge amount of effort into the comfort of the seats. They're brand new design seats. They're in beautifully stitched leather and I have to say that they are mega comfortable. And this has to be now one of the best cabins. It's different to the Range Rover because it's far more sporty again living up to the name. It's got a beautiful sloping dash. It's quite simple but very very luxurious simplicity everywhere you touch feels the highest quality standard you may be paying a lot of money for this vehicle but you realize why one thing that will frighten you rather about this car if you use the power though is the fuel consumption is not good at the moment considering we've done a lot of track work and we're just going back onto the road it's uh, averaging around about 14 you know let's say you can get up there to nearer 20 but make sure you've got a very big wallet because you'll need it to fill this vehicle up. To sum up, what we now have is a range sport that lives up to its name. What we also have is another character to the Range Rover. Despite the similarities visually, they are two totally different vehicles, the Range Rover and the Range Sport. It's really a case of what you prefer. But if you're a driving enthusiast and you want a vehicle that gives you a lot of reward from driving it. This now is the Range Rover you want to be driving.